everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today I have the final sew along for you. Um, I still need to take this to get it professionally pressed. I'm going to take it to the cleaners um, because I, I've got some wrinkling right there um, that I think will just come right out with a proper press. Um, but yeah, today we are going to um, put the lining into the jacket. We're going to sew some buttons on and um, <laughs> my partner and we are going to do buttonholes and finish everything up so thank you guys so much at the very end of the video I'll have some twirls of me actually wearing um, the jacket and also a little photo shoot that I did in the yard with some little bit better photos I'll put a little montage of that as well at the end um, but I hope you guys really enjoyed this sew along um, for V1643 <laughs> um, I really hope you enjoyed this this is the last day for this sew along um, and next week we're going to start, um, I'm actually going to do a tutorial on how to use um, like salvaged leather basically, from like a thrift store jacket or whatever. And then that will tie into the M8011 um, that'll be the following week. Sew along. So that's what you guys have to look forward to. Thank you for sewing along or following along on this one. And I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Bye. All right. It's time to finish these jackets. Okay. You should have a complete shell um, of your jacket right here. Actually, I need to, yeah. And I've already, like I said, gone ahead and put my buttons on just because it's easier. I mean, you could do that at the end. It's up to you. Um, but now we're going to attach our finished lining to our finished jacket. So the first step, I like to go ahead and press up the hem of the body of my jacket just to, um, I mean, we're gonna unfold it, but just to have a set crease in there. It just helps it later to refold back on that line. So I went ahead and pressed my hem up and gave it a really good press and even, you know, pushed down on the clapper and stuff. But now we are going to unfold that hem. We just want that memory of that crease there that will help later. And we are going to match our bands. So we are going to right sides together matching our shoulder seams but we are going to sew maybe it helps to orientate things well okay <laughs> Okay, we're going to unfold and we're going to sew our bands together. Now, remember on your lining, your lining is not completely attached to your facing yet. That's okay. We're not going to even worry about that at this step. So I'm just going to, and you can pop a few pins in, but this should be um, one toe. I mean, it should, you know, it's the same. You cut the same pattern piece out. So we're just going to go ahead and pin our the band that's on our lining to the band that's on our coat. And we're going to sew it five eighths of an inch. We're going to start at one end, and one end and sew all the way to the other end, sewing the bands together at the front edge of the coat. So I'm going to do that really quickly. Okay, once you are finished, we are going to do a lot of trimming down. So first things first, this is wool, um, a wool and wool seam. You've got two and they're both been interfaced. So we want to grade our seams. Now you want to be very careful when you do this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut just the seam allowance. Actually, hold on before we do that. Before we do that, we're going to sew across the bottom of our um, hem, and I think we're going to keep that folded. Yeah. 
yeah, they want us to keep that folded. Okay, so again, you pressed your um, seam allowance of your um, facing, or I guess facing, the band that's attached to the lining, we press that back. What we're gonna do now is we're going to sew across that, and see, you're gonna have a, a, a bend from where you pressed in your hem. We're gonna sew right along that hemline just from um, the edge here of, of this band all the way to the to the edge on both sides. That's gonna help that um, lie nice and flat at the bottom. Again, keep your lining out of the way for, the, for right now, but we're just gonna sew right at that hemline that we pressed in from the edge of the, um, the folded over seam allowance to the outside. So we're gonna do that real quick. All right, so now we have a stitching line that goes at the hem allowance right across, um, we're gonna call it the facing, <laughs> what else to call it? Okay, now we're gonna do a lot of trimming. Okay, first things first, we wanna cut a lot of this bulk out of this hem allowance. So I am going to basically cut the facing part out for the most part. I'm gonna leave about, I don't know, three eighths of an inch in there. Um, and then I'm gonna cut, we want this corner just to be nice and crisp. And you can, you know, turn it right side out and kind of mess around with it about what that's gonna be like at the end. I mean, that's just really bulky there at the corner. So I'm going to cut a little bit of this out too. I'll show you what this is gonna look like. Just keep flipping it back and forth until you get enough bulk out of there to get a nice. So this is basically what I've done. So here we have the um, band that you know is flipped over at the moment. Keep the lining out of the way. And I've just cut a notch out of the bottom of the jacket, um, really just right at the ribbon there. And then I've trimmed this corner here down real well, which is where you've got your intersecting lines right there at that hemline. Um, and again, just keep pushing it right side out till you get something good there. So yeah, I mean, I'll push that out better, but you know, you can kind of mess around with it and see, and I like that. So that looks good. Now I'm gonna do that to the other side as well and then we're gonna trim our band seam allowance. And we're actually gonna do some under stitching. All right, so I'm gonna do the same to this side. So I'm basically just cutting the bulk of the um, band here out of this hem allowance. But I'm also gonna cut some of the jacket out of the hem allowance just not as much. So it kind of gives you a graded seam, basically. And then I'm just gonna cut the corner. So again, we're just trimming out bulk. And you can, again, keep going back and forth and looking at it and seeing um, you know, if you've got enough out of there. And I think that's probably pretty good. Okay, so now, I'm gonna grade the seams first, and then we can go back, because we're gonna need to clip into the neck edge of um, the curve there that's at the neck edge, because you're definitely gonna wanna clip in there. But I think it's easier to grade first, and then come back. So you want the piece that's gonna be, um, when all is said and done, this seam allowance is actually going to be sewn to the facing side or the lining side. So we want that seam allowance. Well, okay, the seam allowance of the jacket, we want to be longer. So we're gonna go around and we're gonna cut the seam allowance of the facing lining unit to about half of its width. Now you wanna be careful and actually, 
if you want to get really particular about tools, applique duckbill scissors, applique scissors are great for grading seams because you're, you're at less of a risk of cutting something you don't want to cut. But if you just lay it flat, I've got the lining side up and I'm gonna just stick my scissors here in between the seam allowances and I'm literally just cutting the lining facing seam down to like half of its width. So like a quarter of an inch, which actually is a little less than half, but you know. So we're gonna do this all the way around the jacket and then we'll come back and clip our um, notches. Okay, so this is what your seam is gonna look like and hopefully you can see that. So you've got the seam of the lining facing unit is shorter than the seam allowance of the outside jacket and that's what we want. So now, we're gonna go in and clip our curves. So just like when we were attaching the bands to the fronts of the jackets, we just wanna clip. So in the front there, where there's that kind of curve, we're just gonna clip, don't clip your stitching, but clip, I don't know, about every three quarters of an inch. We wanna release that so that it lies nice and flat. And then when we get up to the neck of the jacket, we're gonna cut it about every half inch. Because that's a, more, a steeper curve. Also, when you get to your shoulder seam allowances, we can do just like we did before, and you can kind of cut some of the bulk of those seam allowances that are in the seam line out, just to help reduce bulk. It's the name of the game when you're working with wool. Be careful you're not cutting something you don't want to cut. Once you have clipped all your seam allowances, all those in the curve, we are going to understitch. Now, understitching is one of those things in sewing that I find magical. <laughs> it doesn't, I don't feel like it should work, but it does. It will tuck all of the um, inside, will roll to the inside um, instead of being able to see that seam line on the outside. It's just magical every single time. I'm just never cease to be um, amazed and just, yeah. Now you're not gonna be able to get down into the corners where we've sewn across the hem. That's okay, we just wanna get down as close as we can. But what the idea is, is we're gonna do it from the right side, but you're gonna to wanna to take your hand and push the entire seam allowance to the um, facing or the lining side. And we are going to sew from the right side as close to the seam line as we can. Um, and again, I'm gonna sew from the right side um, and we're gonna go all the way around the front of the jacket. Again, as close into those corners as we can get. It's not imperative that you get super close. It's real easy to catch things you don't mean to catch when you're trying to get really, really close. And it'll be fine, just if the majority of it's understitched. So we're gonna sew from the top. And especially when you get to the curves, you're just kind of pulling your um, seam apart and making sure that that whole, that the seam allowance is on, because um, you're basically sewing the seam allowance to the facing side. So we just wanna make sure that it's pushed to um, the facing side, and we're just gonna sew all the way around the jacket.
Okay, I'm gonna show you what this looks like really quickly. So on the right side, hopefully you can see this, you're gonna see a little line of stitching um, on the, the facing or the band. And then on the wrong side, you've got your seam allowance that's basically and effectively been sewn to the facing or the inside band of your jacket, which just makes turning and everything is gonna lie super flat in there once we've pressed and it pulls that inside, um, that seam line to the inside of the jacket and so you can't see it from the front. It's just magical. <laughs> So now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the, I'm going to press my corners open, um, but go over to the ironing board and just sew, or sew, sorry, not sew, press the whole front edge of this jacket really well. Um, I mean, we're still going to be working with things right sides together, so we're going to be turning things, um, you know, wrong way out again. It just, it's easy to press it at this stage and then it'll have muscle memory. So I'm going to go press and then I'll be right back. All right, so I just wanted to show you here on the mannequin where we're at. Again, we're still kind of wrinkly mess. I'm bigger than my mannequins. <laughs> but we've got the lining sewn in. Obviously, the hem is undone and the sleeve hems are undone. But I wanted to show you a little up close. I've pressed everything nice and neat. You can see there's the seam line and how nicely you can see the stitching, how nicely that folds in um, and just keeps everything nice and neat around the neck edge. Um, again, I'm bustier than my <laughs> than my mannequin, so disregard. Um, okay, so now we're going to finish the bottom hem, and then we're going to do the sleeve hems by hand, and then attach the buttons to the sleeves, and then we will do buttonholes, and then we are finished. And I will talk to you guys about um, final pressing, because clearly, I mean, I still have I have to turn this inside out a couple more times, so it's going to get you know more rumpled than it is now. Um, so we'll talk about final pressing here at the end. All right, let's finish this in. Okay, so let's get started. Um, and we're going to finish off the hem of the coat with the machine. And then we're going to do the hem of the sleeves by hand. Um, only because with the vent there, I mean, why not? You're making a nice coat. Um, and then we just have to attach our buttons, which will keep that vent closed. And yeah, buttonholes on the front, and then we're about ready to wear a new coat. Okay, jacket, whatever you want to call this. All right, so I have everything is the way it would be worn right now. I've got the lining on the inside, but we want to flip the lining once again, just because I was pressing everything nice and neat. We're going to flip everything once again, the lining to the outside so that we are right sides together. Because... We're going to sew our hem. I mean, even though we're pressing the jacket in stages, clearly it's just, <laughs> clearly it gets um, torn apart in many, I mean, it just gets turned in and out so many times that it becomes a crumpled mess, but we'll talk about that at the end. All right, so. I have my lining and my jacket again, right sides together. And I'm just gonna line up this bottom hem. And you're gonna wanna turn um, your little facing, you know how you would turn that right side out. Go ahead and turn that rum right sides together again. And you're going to unfold your lining because you had pressed that um, kind of hem back. Well, unfold where you've pressed just the lining. We still have a section where the lining and the facing are not going to meet. That's okay. Leave that hole for now. But just match up all of your seam lines. Um, and again, you trimmed this... Um, the body of the jacket here. So if your lining doesn't match up perfectly, that's okay. Just you know, get it in there because it'll be all tucked inside the band anyway. So the most important thing is to match up your seams. So I just like to go along the bottom of the jacket and j I just usually put a pen in at each seam line, making sure those match up. And again, you've got your darts, you know, make sure those lines are good to match up. I 
I do find pinning this part does help keep you all um, oriented so you're not getting lost in the craziness that is the jacket at this point. All right, now we're just gonna start at one end of the hem and work our way around to the other end of the hem. Now, you wanna be careful, you're not gonna catch this, you know, this weird lumpy area, which is where the band meets there at the front. Um, but I sew with the lining on the bottom because it is much lighter weight than the top. So any um, distortion or anything, we want, we want that on the bottom. So five eighths of an inch, we're gonna sew these together. Okay, and we're actually not gonna press anything on this one because um, you've got a jump pleat in your lining, which means that the lining, uh, when everything is folded up and over itself, is going to um, have some excess to allow for movement and room. So now, We're gonna turn everything right side out. Now, again, you've just basically sewn your jacket into a big hole, but we don't have the sleeves sewn yet, so that's how we're gonna pull it through. So this would be similar if you were bagging a lining, except this is much easier because we just have the, um, the whole bottoms of the sleeves. So you're just gonna pull the whole jacket through, pick a sleeve through one of the sleeves. Go carefully. You don't wanna rip any of your sleeve seams. This always takes just a minute. So this is similar to bagging a lining. This isn't really bagging a lining because we're going to have to do, um, we're hand sewing the, the sleeves, hems, the lining and the hem um, by hand. Whereas in a true bagged lining you would do all that by machine, but with the vent it just gets really difficult. But if you wanted to omit a vent and just sew the sleeve as is, um, the tutorial where I showed you how to shorten jacket sleeves, that is exactly how you would do if you were, do, if you were bagging a coat um, at this step. But you'd have to have a hole in the sleeve lining. Whew. All right. Okay, so when everything has been pulled through your sleeve, the main body of the jacket should all be, kind of stick your finger in there and poke that out again, should all be closed up except here at the bottom. So this is the bottom front of the jacket. Um, you should have a hole here still. Um, and we're just gonna close that up with a slip stitch a few hand stitches because then again you know there's that jump pleat in your lining right there okay now before we go any further you could catch stitch the main hem um, the body of the jacket to itself um, before you flipped it right side out and that would help keep your um, hem up but what I like to do, which is a total cheat, if you have enough seam lines, is I just stitch in the ditch from the right side. If you have a good matching, especially when you've got a real tweedy fabric like this that's kind of heavy duty, it's not super smooth, You can the stitching just gets lost. So I'm just gonna stitch like, um, I don't know, three quarters of an inch in each seam line along the hem um, in the ditch. And that is going to secure <clears throat> that hem but again and also at the dart but you could um, definitely before you flipped this right side out um, you know pull that main body of that hem back on itself a little bit and do a catch stitch and um, I mean you could look up catch stitch I mean that's a very very common sewing uh, hand sewing stitch 
So what we're going to do is I'm going to sew stitch in the ditch and I'm going to do that on each of the little seam lines here and then we're going to pull out a needle and thread because we are going to close this area and I'll show you how to do your sleeve hem. When you are stitching in the ditch from the right side, pull your lining up out of the way. You don't want to accidentally sew the lining down. So see, you can't even see that I've stitched anything there. Um, it's just right stitched in the ditch from the front. And that will keep that hem up. Um, if you're having issues, if you've got a very uh, swingy bottom of your coat, someone asked about this, to where when you're folding up your hem, you have more circumference at the cut edge than you do, than you're folding up into, so like a circle hem kind of. Um, a catch stitch does help with that because that can kind of help ease in the fullness that's at the bottom of the hem up into itself. Um, and then you can just hit it really well with um, steam to try and smooth that out. Also, um, if you want to do less of a hem on that and finish off with bias tape or um, anything that can kind of mold and bend to where you can, you know, press that fullness in super easily, that's another option. Um, I'm not going to show how to do that on this one, but someone did ask about that, if they have a real wavy hem, and that's usually what that is. Interfacing in your hem, number one, will help huge with a wavy hem. And number two, um, if you do have a almost a circle-ish type or a flared hem, where you've got more fullness at the cut edge than, you, than you're folding up into, um, hand sewing your hem in place and then pressing really well will help ease that fullness out and give you help to not have a wavy hem. So now what we want to do is stick your um, lining down into your sleeve. <clears throat> and I'm going to show you, we're going to finish the bottom of the hem here first just so we can have that completely done. And then we will um, do the sleeves. So just like when we were applying our, um, I'm falling out of my chair. <laughs> just like when we were applying our pockets, it's just a slip stitch. So you're just coming up into, um, well, you're gonna wanna bury your tail. Again, I use a tail when I'm hand stitching and I know that's a big no-no to purists. I'm gonna bury my tail. Kinda tuck it in there. And then what I'm doing, so we pressed this um, before and it, you know, got sewn like that. So just kind of, you know, tuck your lining in there and we're just going to slip stitch this face, we're calling it a facing, this facing up until you stop sewing, which is right about there. So all you're doing again is you're going to take your needle through the fold there and then take a little bite out of the bottom which is ribbon, which is a little stiffer than the regular fabric. I also don't use a thimble. I find it harder to, I mean, I know that there's proper ways. I just find it harder to, I like to be able to feel things. So yeah, so I'm just gonna do that. I'm just going to catch a little bite out of the fold here, and then I slip it into a bite out of the bottom of the jacket. It's pretty easy. And I have a double strand of thread. So I'm just going to sew this. And 
and then when I do my last stitch, I'm going to tie it off, and then we will, um, I'll do the other side, I'll do the other side off camera. No sense in you watching me do both sides, but I'll show it to you here real quick. Whoop, and whoop. Bury the knot. Tie it off for the next side. <laughs> so there. Woo. Um, there you go. It's all nice and closed up and stitched. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other side and then we will attack the sleeves. Okay, time to do the sleeve. All right, I have my sleeves turned inside out so that my lining, um, just like you would turn it inside out um, for wearing it. So I've got the wrong side of my sleeve is here and then my lining is pulled on top of it. So again, you have a jump pleat in your sleeve, which means um, that there's extra room for you, you know, um, vertical room for it to, to move around when you're taking it off and putting it on. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take, we're not gonna bother with the vent yet because there's gonna be excess there and I'll show you how to deal with that, but we are gonna take the hem of the sleeve lining and fold it under 5 eighths of an inch and you can measure, you could even go and press that if you want, um, which actually might make it a little bit easier. So just press 5 eighths of an inch um, carefully all the way around the hems of your sleeves. And then we are going to match, so, so once this is pressed up, we're gonna match this raw edge with the raw edge of the hem. And you're just going to pin that in place. And I've matched a seam line up to a seam line and we're just gonna pin it in place. And again, five eighths. So here's the vent that's right here. Um, and you already have five eighths pressed under on this. So we're gonna press under five eighths and then just kind of match the raw edge on both of those. Again, this is gonna get, that you're gonna have excess here and it's gonna get pulled down more. Um, so just match kind of all the way around and it's just kind of generally five eighths. And actually, Pin five eighths, but we're not going to sew all the way to the corner because we're going to pull down that excess. But go ahead and pin. Go ahead and pin, and I'll show you where to start. So we're just going to pin, matching the raw edges of the hem to the raw edge of the lining all around the sleeve. Don't worry if it's not like perfectly tucked in on the side because again, we're going to come back and this from the vent is actually going to get pulled down a little bit because. Um, We'll pull out the excess of that jump pleat there, but then you'll have it in the rest of the sleeve. And the same on this side. Go ahead and pin it. Now this side, it, you're gonna go almost to that folded edge because when this gets sewn, that lining's gonna get sewn just inside the folded edge of that um, part of the vent. And really, it kind of just wants to fold in on its own, you know, once you get started. And you can pin all the way through the jacket. You mean you don't wanna sew all the way through, but you can pin. All right, so there we got. I've got all around the edge of the hem. My vent is still open and loose, that's okay. And I'm gonna do that same slip stitch. And I'm just gonna start at one end, but I'm not gonna start all the way at the corner because again, some of this excess is gonna get pushed down. Um, actually, I take that back, go corner to corner. Some of this excess is gonna get pushed down, but we'll just sew, we'll just create a pleat there and just sew. So yeah, go ahead and sew from one corner all the way to the other corner. 
and do the slip stitch all the way there and then I'll meet you right back here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do both sleeves but I'll meet you right back here and then we'll talk about how to slip stitch the um, vent. All right I wanted to show you this up close so I've moved this over here. Um, all right so my sleeve is still inside. We I have hand sewn the bottom to the bottom here and I've pinned my sleeve shut because this you know vent here this flap is um, not been secured down so that just make there we go <laughs> that just this keeps everything in place so I've just pinned and you could hand base that shut if you wanted to but I've just pinned this just to help keep things in order so you're gonna have a lot of excess sleeve here and the way to determine so up here on the sleeve we've got where we have stitched down um, the top of the vent here we want this to sit just right below that so find that spot and you want that to sit right below that and you could just go ahead and pop a pin um, also kinda hard to see but this right here is the the vent so we're gonna put this right here and we're just gonna line up the this edge that's been pressed to that edge all the way down and you're gonna have a lot of excess that's fine and we're gonna pin that just like that okay and then on this side, remember how it kind of splayed open a little bit. On this side, um, here's the raw edge of this. We want this to kind of wrap underneath there, but it's just you just want to make sure it's covering that raw edge. And then it will also have a pleat, like so. And we will pin that down. So I'm going to pin that real quick. Sorry, I keep going out of focus. I'm going to pin that real quick and show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is what it looks like all pinned. So this is the underlap, basically, that you're kind of seeing here. Um, the overlap is tucked in here, but all my raw edges are enclosed. Except you do have a little bit of a raw edge right here. I mean, it's probably fine. You can kind of whip stitch that hand with your hand if you'd like. Um, but we're going to sew all the way down to the corner of the lining with the slip stitch. Just whoop, and then whoop, all the way down. Um, and then the rest of this is all free and you'll have a, a pleat, which is what you want. Um, and you can leave this pin in if you'd like, um, because once we're done with this, we're going to sew our buttons on. Um, you don't need to do any slip stitching here. I just have that pin there to keep it in place. Um, so yeah, you're just going to go up this opening and down this opening. And we're going to do that for both sleeves. Um, and then we're going to attach the buttons onto the right side. Um, and then we're done with the sleeves and yeah then we just have buttonholes and buttons and final pressing so um, I'm gonna do that real quick and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like and then we can talk about buttons alright so this is what it looks like all nice and neat um, that's the machine machine stitching we did there um, we've sewn our pleat down I mean there's still you know the pleat is there and I've just pinned um, so these are all finished edges, just pinned the sleeve closed because now we are going to turn the whole thing right side out and attach our buttons. I just want to show you what that looked like once it was all slip stitched shut. All right, now we're going to sew the buttons on. So what I've done is I've just taken some pins and I've shut the vent basically and I've just pinned right along the vent. Now this is the top part of the sleeve on this side, this is the back part of the sleeve on this side. So this is the um, overlap is right here, so you can stick your finger underneath. This is the part that goes over this part, if that makes sense. So the pattern has you using five buttons, and they have them stacked pretty much like right on top of each other up this vent. So I've got them here. So I'm just going to, I don't know, I think I'm going to, you can play around with these, just place them on your jacket. These have to be put on by hand because it is a shank button. But I'm um, probably going to go, probably going to start it, you know, the bottom of the button about five-eighths of an inch up. And then probably a quarter to three-eighths of an inch over from the um, fold there. And then I think... I'm going to do them pretty close together, I think. I mean, I'll evenly space them, but I'm going to kind of stack them right on top of each other. All the way up the jacket sleeve. Sorry. <laughs> Those aren't going to look very good because they're 
wobbly. But I'm going to put them pretty close together because that's what the pattern has. But I think I'm going to start this bottom button about 5 eighths of an inch up and about, again, a quarter of an inch to 3 eighths of an inch over from the fold. And I'm just going to start with one button and sew them on um, one at a time. Now, when I'm sewing on buttons, I actually have four pieces of thread through my needle. So I double up two different strands because then you only have to go through the button. I go through three times. Um, because you've got four pieces of thread there. It just makes it a little bit stronger. So it's just a little quicker way to sew on buttons. My mentor taught me that trick. Um, so yeah, so I'm just going to do five buttons up the sleeve on each sleeve, and I'm going to eyeball them. I'm not going to measure them, but I will make sure that the sleeves match before um, when I'm sewing the sleeve, the buttons onto the other sleeve. So I'm just going to quickly, oops, throw buttons. I'm going to quickly sew these on. I say quickly. It's not going to be that quick. But I'm going to sew these onto the sleeve and then we're going to go to the buttonholes on the front of the jacket and attach those buttons and then it's just a matter of uh, pressing. We're almost done. Okay, and just like that we've got buttons. I have them very crowded on there on purpose. That was the look I was going for. It was the inspiration look as well where they're almost overlapping. Or they are overlapping. Um, I see that on a lot of ready-to-wear, actually, that I have um, was altering. <clears throat> anyway, there we go. Our sleeves are finished. So now I'm going to take you over to my cutting table and show you how I mark buttonholes. So that is our next step, and then we will sew the buttonholes, put on more buttons, and I am not going to lie, I am so sick of putting these buttons on because I'll see 10 and then 3 on the front. I've already done 13, um, but we still have, I think, 8 or something to go on the front. So, okay, let's uh, go over there and I'll show you how to mark my, uh, how I mark my buttonholes. Okay, so I've taken a chalk pen and I use these um, Choco Liner, is that what it's called? Chalkener. It's a chalkener. Um, this takes the chalk off and it's got a real fine little um, wheel that's on there. It makes a great line. So I've marked the center of my navy ribbon right here at half of an inch and um, in the picture there's five buttons and um, they stop at the base of the uh, pocket. So I've just drawn a line where I, do, I want the bottom of my, that'll be my last button basically. And then I want the top of my other button to hit right here and this is right at the curve. Um, it's where the the ribbon starts to curve as you can see. It's not um, it's where it starts to, you know, my straight line veers off. So I want five buttons between these points. And how I do that, this is called a simflex. If you guys have seen this, it's for marking pleats and buttonholes and stuff, but it will do, um, there's eight points. So you can do up to eight buttons at a time, um, however wide you want. And it evenly spaces it for you, and it's genius. <laughs> so I want five. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to put the bottom one right there. And I want, I like to mark the bottom of my buttons. Ugh. So I want it spaced out just a bit more. So I'm going to line that up there with that line. And that up here. And that should be about right um, for my buttonhole. If I put it, well, maybe a little smaller. See again. You just kind of go. Whoosh. And then that'll probably be about right. Well, maybe a little wider. <laughs> so you can just play with this until, you know, the bottom of your buttonhole. They're pretty big buttons. So there we go. So now I can just go in with my chalk and mark um, in each of these little openings across my. Uh, ribbon and then I can go and line up my sewing machine and sew my buttons that way. So that is how I mark my buttonholes. It's very very simple. All right, I've got my buttonholes stitched and you can still see the chalk line there. That will come off with a little damp washcloth. But the way I open my buttonholes is I use a buttonhole chisel and I just do it on my self-healing mat and it's just a matter of literally putting it right in the middle of the buttonhole and then pressing down. I'm not going to do that on camera. I don't want to mess it up. But that's how I cut open my buttonholes. Um, it's very simple. And um, I have put fray check. I put fray check on my buttonholes, both the front and the back, and um, let that set. And now I'm going to cut them open, and then I'll show you how I mark my buttons. Okay, now that these are cut open, I am laying my jacket wrong sides 
together all along the front, making sure that my bottoms match up nicely um, and that all of these match up. And then all I do is I take a pen, sorry, I take a pen and I will just stick it right in the middle of that buttonhole. Doop. And that will show me exactly, I mean, that went in a little wonky because I will want to center that in the blue ribbon, but that's exactly where it wants to go, needs to go on this side. So I will stick pins through all five of these buttons. And then when I come through, I will mark, um, actually I'll probably just mark with a pen um, where each button needs to be placed. So I'll do that. And then it's just a matter of sewing on the buttons. Okay, so here we have the finished jacket. Um, you can see a bra peeking. I put a bra on my mannequin to give her boobs um, to help fill out the jacket just a little bit more. Okay, pressing is the last thing that needs to happen. Now I have hit this jacket really well with an eye, like steam and stuff while it's been on the dress form to try and get all the wrinkles um, out. But as you can tell, like there's still some um, wrinkling and it's just really hard to get to these areas um, well, this is just because of the way it's on the mannequin. I had someone actually suggest this to me on the channel, or maybe it was when I just was blogging, I can't remember, but um, take it to your dry cleaners. Take it to the dry cleaners and have them press. They've got access to more professional equipment that can really make things look professional. So um, I think I might do that. I might take this to my dry cleaners and um, have them give it a good press and then it'll be good for next time when it's time to go to the dry cleaners but I am in love with this jacket so that is it I hope you've enjoyed this so along and I will um, insert now here at the end some footage of me wearing the jacket um, yeah this is a fun one okay guys I will see you next next time